I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from 9 to 5. Hey, I pay the price. All I want is to be left alone in my average home. But why do I always feel like I'm in the twilight zone? And I always feel like somebody's watching me. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Here we are, back for another episode. Jason Bradley, Andrew Rector, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Now, once again, you have to uh, enlighten me on our uh, titillating music there. Wow. What uh, what are we what are we quoting there? I, I, I think you probably know this one. If you yeah, okay, uh, well, no, no, give me a hint. Okay, I'm good okay. at this. All right, uh, Michael Jackson sang the chorus. It, it was an English guy that that sang the song, but Michael Jackson sang the chorus. Is he a member of the Beatles? No. Of course, it's not Paul, Paul McCutney. No, it's um, not. Is the person alive or dead? Uh, Michael Jackson? No, He's no, no, dead. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the person who sang with Michael Jackson. I, I'm pretty sure he's alive. Okay. Yeah. Male or female? Male. A- English? Yes. I was going to say Davy Jones, but he's not there. Out. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Give me another song. Give me the title of a song that they. Oh, another song they did. I don't think there was one. You don't. Th- well, then how am I ever going to get it's, it? It's a, he song? was a one-hit wonder. Does that help? No. I mean, at least over on this side of the Atlantic Ocean, I don't like to say it on this side of the pond. I think that's dumb. Yeah. But uh, on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Only in Ocean, golf can you say the other side of the pond. No, I always say I'm in the pond. Oh. <laughs> I usually don't go in the pond, but I'm out of yeah. bounds. Um, <laughs> That's okay. the other place I hit. Okay, I give up. I give up. Who is uh, Rockwell. Somebody's watching me. Oh. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that one. Yeah, you know that one? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That See? sounds 80s to me. Yeah, that okay. is 80s. It's a- it's yeah. Surprised if it's 80s, I didn't know it. Yeah. Huh. So yeah. So here we are, episode now, now, fifty-five. Yeah. Now, now yeah. remember, okay. sometimes I know the song and I don't know who sung it. Right. Sang it. I mean, you know, that's the other thing too. I mean, you you you, you hear a song a hundred times, you don't even know the title to it. Sometimes. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, you know, one of those things. You know, you know, I used to travel when I traveled for uh, Best Buy. We used to rent cars with when uh, satellite radio first came in, and I always had the eighties on eight. Hmm. And they would show you who sang it. You, you know, you could see that right. like, ticker tape thing, and I'd be like, I didn't know they sang that. You know, Duran Duran sings that, and mm-hmm. who's the guy who sings it again? <laughs> so I, I got all my knowledge from eighties on eight. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Oh, so yeah, that is that. And for all those of you who probably knew that, that maybe now you want to hear the song, or maybe you didn't know what that was, or maybe you never know what we're talking about, go out to to Spotify. We've got a, a playlist out there called Community Solutions Songs from the Podcast. We throw we throw these songs up there every week for you. So you can you can find out what the songs are. You can just sit back and rock out. It doesn't matter. It's all good. And I got to say, you are such a library of music that there's all different kind. You like all different kinds of music. I know you do. Yes. Um, I kind of do. There's some I don't like, but I like some certain songs or certain groups, but I, I don't necessarily like the genre. There is... All sorts of things on Spot My Fly. Uh, Spotify, I'm sorry. There's all sorts of things there. Uh, if even I can understand it and do it, folks, that means any of you can. No question about it. The greatest bumper music, titles, whatever. We got we're KQRS. We're going to pass their library pretty soon. That's what I think. <laughs> That's going to take a while. Yeah, we'll take we're, a few we're years. up around, what, 42 songs in the playlist or something? <laughs> uh, we're, we're like a we top got, 40 station We got right KDWB now. beat. <laughs> That's what we do by two songs. Yeah. That's <laughs> Even Casey, you got more songs than Casey Kasem. <laughs> you know, incidentally, yeah. uh-huh. I remember Sunday nights. When I was a teenager, listening Sunday night, the top forty with Casey Kasem. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody listened to that. Oh I mean, yeah, that was back when people didn't have eight hundred channels and all that kind of. But I always remember, you know, what song you, you come in Monday morning and mm-hmm. we talk about the Vikings and we talk about you know what song was number one or what. <laughs> I right. just remember doing that. So times have sure changed, Jay. Oh, they sure have. I you know the. With with the way things have gone with the internet, and I think just the state of music as it is, I mean, I I don't know what most of the songs on the charts are. Look, I, here's here's the thing, the internet's been so great 
mm-hmm. for so many. Th- it's been far more of a positive than a negative. Yep. But with music, there's something about buying a CD and putting it in my, you know, waiting for that new CD. Remember that when you'd wait for that new? I remember. Pearl Jam was a big band when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And I remember they released an album. I know because all my friends liked grunge, and I really didn't. I liked some of it. But mm-hmm. there was an album that came out when I was a senior in high school, Vitology, I think it was called. Vitology, yeah. yeah and I remember people like getting it the night before, getting in line. Mm-hmm. To, I mean, I mean there's, it's like there's something about reading the paper. You know, that, that nobody under 25 will ever do. You know, I remember my father, if you messed with his Sunday paper before we went to church, <laughs> I mean, you, you, you would be in a bad mood for the next three days. You couldn't touch his Sunday paper. And it, isn't there something about reading the paper, uh, getting that uh, DVD when it mm-hmm. It's like, you know, as much as I love what the Internet has done and take it so for granted, it's taken away some of those simple pleasures, I think. Yeah, I mean, some of that. I think part of what got me hooked on music in the first place, I mean, obviously, music itself, and it moved me, and, and I felt it deeply. But being able to pour through my parents' album covers, you know, and, and, and just yeah, to the look vinyl. Those, yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, that's a great cover, Beatles Abbey Road, or Charlie Daniels Band, Fire on the Mountain. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, but oh, you don't do that anymore. That? It's all downloading yeah. this or that. I remember I found my parents had uh, Thriller by Michael Jackson mm-hmm. on the, on the uh, record player in the yeah. living room. And that's how I started, you know, knowing who – I didn't know who the Jackson 5 was too young, but mm-hmm. they liked that kind of – believe it or not. I think, God, oh, my parents were such no. nerds, and yet, you know, it was – I don't know. I well, think there. I think there's something too about albums. Yeah. Hearing all the songs, not just the three you hear on the radio. You know, right. hearing everybody's talent, and and, and not every song uh, goes out somewhere. I think that's been lost too. Like you, there, there's certain CDs you put them in, and you don't fast forward one song. The whole album's right. so good. Yeah, and the, you know that's kind of been lost a little bit too. I think. Little bit that it has. It's moved more towards singles and, yeah. and a little less towards albums. I mean, people are still putting albums out. I think you know part of the great thing about the internet is that you could release a song a day if you wanted to, yeah. if you had the ability to do that. And the audience, uh, yeah. right? Well, I mean, you but don't in, even need. But you're the right. Audience. In the past, yeah. it was okay. Well, what radio played was all you knew. Right. Today, it's not. Lo- it's like us on the radio mm-hmm. on the podcast. Fifteen years ago, we couldn't do this. Right. You know, the radio <laughs> controlled who got heard. Absolutely. So there are pluses and minuses. You get rid of the gatekeepers, and they yeah, it's knocked down. It's knocked down the barrier. Yeah, absolutely. A couple guys like us could never get on the air. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why. I find us interesting, but Uh that's good. And our our audience continues to grow. We have to thank everybody for that. Absolutely. Every week we get more downloads. We get more people listening. More people going to the blog. We had a huge day. Yeah, we did. The other day when uh, we uh, downloaded our last uh, podcast. Yeah, that was a huge the day American for American Planning Association, the one from a couple of weeks ago. So uh, big thanks to everybody for finding us. And we're going to keep giving you reasons to do that. Uh, we're not quitting until everybody agrees with us. <laughs> so, we might not quit then. We might change our mind just to make you all agree with us on something else. That's so. true. It may get to that point. I won't <laughs> deny that. But, you know. What? Or or we'll just pick up more states or something. I, I don't know what we'll do. You always can continue to grow, Jay. Just remember that. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, the the other side, the, the pro-growing government side is never going to stop. I mean, we can beat them. They'll come up with, with new reasons to have to beat them back. Yeah, more, they'll, they'll change. You know? uh, they'll call Meals on Wheels something else or something. <laughs> meals, you're going after Meals on Wheels. No, but week. I'm just saying, what's the difference between Meals on Wheels and 20 other programs? Nothing. Right, they right. just call it something different and then, you know pretend it's a new idea well and that's it and we'll cover some of this stuff in later podcasts uh probably very soon but you know like we've been hearing a lot about them bringing the speed limit down you know across cities that's a fairly new idea that's starting to get some traction uh 21 plus uh for a minimum age to buy tobacco that's a fairly new idea that's getting a lot of play so some some, think of some other dumb thing some in. cities considering that with gun purchases too yeah i mean that's don't think that's something as we've said before limited to 
state legislature or to Congress. Right. It's wherever they think it's going to get passed. Yep. So, yeah, they'll keep thinking of dumb things, and we'll have to keep demystifying it for you and letting you know what's going on so that you can beat it back at your city hall. That's That's just the way it goes. Today, uh, let's go a little different direction, if you don't mind. Uh, Well, well, let me me say something. We did a baseball episode about four months ago, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And this one is not a sports one. No. But, you know... (laughs) It's a little personal for me mm-hmm. because um, you, you, I think that uh, what your government is capable of doing, what your government is capable of, I don't want to say covering up, but I think is sometimes hard to grasp. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, can government really do that? Really do this? And I've always been fascinated by a couple things we're going to talk about. And um just kind of present I think they're just so intriguing. Yeah. That I think they're fun. So we're kind of taking a fun look at a couple things today. Well, and, and this is valuable because when we started out and we went to City Hall, and we, we talked and told them how we felt about things. We were accused of being conspiracy theorists <laughs> on more than one occasion. Oh, we still get accused yeah. of that. And and we're not. We're, we're pretty solid, level-headed guys, I'd like to think. Uh, you know, common-sense approach to things. But if you don't ever look at the things that are out there and, and get an understanding, you know... It, it, you know, it is, things could be true, things could be false, but you, you got to have, you got to, you got to study these things. So and that, you got to you have know, an open mind. Yeah, you really have to have an open mind. I think that's the key when we talk about a so-called conspiracy. Yeah, uh, you can't leap to conclusions, mm-hmm. but you have to look at evidence and um, go from there. Right. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know, we talked about, uh, uh, we talk a lot about Agenda 21. Now, in my mind, okay, this is just me talking. I don't think that's a conspiracy. I think that is a document agreed upon by the United States. Since it's non-binding, it was not a treaty passed by the Senate. And yet it is quietly and I would say under the radar Principles from that are mm-hmm. being uh, put into place everywhere. Whether it's right. directly tied to that or not, mm-hmm. you can see the same language. And I, we could go over it all day if we want to. Right Now, I don't know that there's 20 people, you know, 20 George Soroses out there, the <laughs> Bill Gateses, who are manipulating all this. There right. could be, but I'm not going to jump to that because I don't know that. Right. So... But I, what I do know is we've had a drift, I call it a drift toward world government mm-hmm. that we're headed towards. And I don't think that that's a conspiracy. I think people should be legitimately concerned about it. Um, a lot of things have been in the news lately about trade, mm-hmm. you know, things like NAFTA. I've pointed out before that uh, if we wanted free trade between Canada, the United States, and Mexico, uh, that document should be a paragraph long. Yeah. NAFTA's 2,000 pages. Well, what free trade agreement is 2,000 pages? Because it's filled with environmental junk. Mm -hmm. It's filled with livable wage crap. It's filled with crony capitalism. It's not a free trade agreement. No. I mean, free trade is, hey, I'd like to trade with you. Would you like to trade with me? Yeah, great. Here, here. I got my base. I got my Willie Mays. I'll trade you my Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Okay. Or something like that. That's free trade. Mm -hmm. Free trade is not the, 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 uh, TPP or NAFTA, those things right. are not free trade. Mm-hmm. They may have one twentieth of its free trade, and the rest of it is a bunch of garbage. And it's not a conspiracy to say that. No. Okay? It's right in documents, right in words. Mm-hmm. But, Jay, when I was a younger kid, and, and I'll get into why in a minute, I was fascinated by two conspiracies in American history. Hmm. Okay, so this is going to be what we're talking about right now. The Kennedy killing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about John. Yeah. And the moon landing. 
Okay. So we're not going to talk about Bill Gates putting cancer into his vaccines he sends to Africa. We can talk about that, too. But um, I, I don't really know anything about that. I, <laughs> I know a lot about the Common Core things that he backs. But, yeah. You know, that's, yeah. again, a good subject for another time because yeah. it's affecting every local school district. You can't get federal money unless you signed on to the uh, whatever the legislation was that was the follow-up to mm-hmm. uh, – uh, no Child Left Behind. I can't remember what it's called, but it doesn't matter. Right. But if you want two sexy conspiracies in American history, mm-hmm. JFK and the moon landing are always very high on the list. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I was balls deep in these two conspiracies. Hmm. Um, and it all started for me when the uh, back in 2005 when the... Um, Domestic spying thing came out. You remember that? Mm-hmm. The whole warrantless wire. T- I, I, yeah. I'm trying to remember the specifics, but it had been going on for two years at this point. The New York Times knew about it for a year and sat on the story. Mm-hmm. Now, I thought to myself, okay, the New York Times, who hated the Bush administration, the yeah. Bush administration, which was doing questionable things, I think, legally, And yet the media and the president acted undercover, kind of, for a while. Yeah. And I kind of was scratching my head at that. In fact, I was almost so intrigued by that that I didn't even care about the legality of the what was going on. Hmm. It was kind of like, you know, if if that's possible. And then I've seen things in my life like Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. You know, don't tell me the government can't keep a secret. I mean, I think it's harder today than right. it used to be. But um, and the Kennedy killing for me um, has always been something. I mean, if something like that is on TV or something, uh, I am glued to it, mm-hmm. and I, I I can't understand why. I can understand how somebody my dad's age could be yeah. who lived through that, but I'm so fascinated by that. And the moon landing one I'm fascinated by, too. And I, I, I can't explain it. Because, mm-hmm. and I don't know what you think about them, because we'll get into this. But yeah. I walked in, I decided I was going to go, I was going to learn everything I could. I don't remember everything, but I, 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 I studied this stuff. Yeah. And I read part of the Warren Commission. It's a really long and lawyery and wordy um, it's contradictory in some places. You could read into it what you want to read into it. I get why people... I walked in... I'll start with the JFK one first. Okay. I walked into that thinking it was a conspiracy. I walked it out thinking it wasn't. Hmm. But it's a sexy story. Yes. I mean, it really is. Now, you have to transplant yourself to understand it. You have to go back to 1960. Mm-hmm. Okay. Television is very new, and it's a very powerful. Television is probably what like the iPod, iPad is today. I mean, that was what television was to people then. Um, you have President Eisenhower, a, a 71-year-old man leaving office, mm-hmm. a 43-year-old coming into office. Uh, the equivalent I make in my lifetime is you went from President Reagan, President Bush Sr. to Bill Clinton. Mm-hmm. I just remember Clinton being you know, the first baby boomer. Clinton was, is my dad's age. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, wow, a guy my dad's age is president. You felt the change, even though I didn't think it was good change. <laughs> you still, you know, President Reagan was older than my grandpa. Right. And the optics back then of Eisenhower to Kennedy. We think of Eisenhower as so old. President Trump will be 72 in June. So <laughs> you didn't even talk about his age in the campaign right. the way it was 20 or 30 years ago. But the optics of change and the fact that President Kennedy was killed, mm-hmm. you know, he's been martyred in American history like no modern figure, right. in my opinion. Even FDR doesn't go as far, I think, as JFK. I just think there's an attachment to him that from that generation mm-hmm. that I- I- you just can't really explain it. So I think there's the intrigue of him. 
there's the for me there's the aftermath of well would we have had vietnam would we have had mm-hmm. all the spending stuff that we had under yeah. president johnson um probably not no. I mean, I probably would add civil rights and a few other things. I don't yeah, think Kennedy would have gone that far. Great society. For I her, don't think you know. so. And I think President Johnson used President Kennedy's death to his advantage. He was much too. more of a slimy politician. Of course. And, and maybe we'll get into this, but part of the whole conspiracy was that LBJ was behind right. it so that there, he could ascend to the presidency. Yes. You know? I mean, that is uh, believed, and there is... I'm not going to lie. I mean, there is – you could pick up bits and pieces of that if you looked hard enough. Right. You know what I mean? But the uh, – so the, the conspiracies that are out there about President Kennedy's killing, and there are many. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to – but I think you have to start with the shooter. Mm-hmm. I mean, it always starts with the shooter. Right. And this is where, to me – the conspiracy has gone off the rails. Mm-hmm. They've lost Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby. Yeah, who they were is lost in American history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about a magic bullet. But but who yeah. knows who Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby are? You know, when you watch a conspiracy show, nobody talks about them. Right. It's all. <laughs> You know, oh, Johnson became president. Nixon wanted Kennedy dead. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's all uh, it 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 has to start at the source, right? Um, and if you look at a man like Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald was a communist, mm-hmm. communist sympathizer. Spent a lot of time in Russia and married a Russian lady. Mm-hmm. Proposed to another one. Yep, and he was a marine. He was in between a marksman and a sharpshooter. He wasn't quite a sharpshooter, but he was a marksman. Mm -hmm. Uh, He could shoot at targets twice the distance of President Kennedy's killing, which is 88 yards. Yeah. Oswald could make those shots. Sorry, he could. A lot of people don't think he could have, but the evidence shows he could have. Oswald worked for minimum wage. Oswald did not own a car, did not own a house. Mm-hmm. He's an interesting person to pick for a hitman, don't you think? Yeah. So how does it get? How has it gone so off the rails? I'm always so intrigued by how we go from him. Now, the the obvious one is that Kennedy was hit from the front. Yeah. That's the obvious one you see, and if you watch the footage, the, the Zabruder uh, film, Zabruder film yeah. it looks like Kennedy was hit from the front. Right. Does it not? I mean, it doesn't does. it look like that? Yeah. So um, that's, I think, where the conspiracy starts. There were two shooters. Mm-hmm. So how do you separate fact from fiction there? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. You know, so, I mean, it, it, but, but by it, naked eye, you can. Yeah, if you want to believe there were two shooters, mm-hmm. you can based on what you see. Yeah. So that in and of itself lends to, well, if Oswald was one, who was the other? Right. Was Oswald one at all? Now, the evidence against Oswald's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It is humongous. Yeah. Um, the Warren Commission, the one thing they did right was make a – he would be convicted in an hour mm-hmm. if he went to trial. Oswald's conduct in jail was of a guilty person. If he were a fall guy, if you were a fall guy, if you were falsely accused, he was headed to the electric chair. Yeah. If you were falsely accused of something, would you not raise hold? This guy loved it. Yeah. Watch the press conferences. Mm-hmm. This guy was having the time of his life. <laughs> a psychopath. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, Oswald himself, though, to me, remains an enigma. Mm-hmm. Um, he defected to Russia. Came back yeah. and worked for a group. I don't know how much. And stop me if you okay. have something to say about it or know something I don't. Worked for a group. He basically drifted. Mm-hmm. Lived at a house of a lady named Ruth Payne. Yes. Oswald's from New Orleans, but the Paynes lived in Irving. And uh, 
he like rented from her or something. Uh, it's kind of unclear. He was close to his brother, Robert, who just passed away very recently. Um, looked like him, too, unfortunately for Robert. Yeah. Uh, his father died when his mother was pregnant with him, so he never knew a father. Um, and he was part of a group in Cuba to restore Cuban trade. He was sympathetic to the Castro regime. Right. Um, and he uh, actually got interviewed by some local uh, local uh, radio show. He debated a guy named Edward Butler, mm-hmm. who was a radio show host. I actually, actually, uh, Oswald was pretty articulate. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't. People think he was dumb. I don't think he was dumb. I think he was just a lost person. But uh, and so there's the communist connection there too. Right. You know, I mean, what is the reaction of the American people when they find out a communist, a self-proclaimed Marxist? Mm -hmm. Remember how close we were to war. Right. We were this close to a missile crisis. We were this close. We were a we were one itchy trigger figure general Mm -hmm. from a war with Cuba with the Soviet Union, Union maybe a nuclear war. Right. So what do you think the reaction is when they find a communist kills President Kennedy? Yeah. Isn't it That's, easy to draw conclusions from that? Oh, it sure is. You know, and you think about what communism meant back in those days as People well. People were building bomb shelters. Mm-hmm. Duck and cover, the, you know, the the whole um, Cold War, I mean, was really getting... Hot. Hot at that time, (laughs) you know. Cold War wasn't cold. No. No. I mean, it was conceivable that the Soviet Union would would try and and send missiles our way, you know. Yeah, Uh, I think that was totally. I don't think that was out of the realm at all. No. And I think any rational person would have been crazy not to think a nuclear war could have happened. Yeah. Heck, I grew up thinking it in the 80s. Fearful. Of, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I remember a split Germany and yeah. uh, you know all that and being fearful of me. My dad fought communists. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's talk, um, you know, elements of our government brought Kennedy down. The mob brought Kennedy down. Right. Um, the CIA brought right. Kennedy down. Yeah. And, he, and I'll say this. To some people, that sounds far-fetched, but let me tell you what our government's capable of. Mm-hmm. I mean, remember at the time, okay, we had um, Operation Northwoods going on. Right. Now, if people don't know what that is. That is where, and this was signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yeah, this is not a conspiracy. No, this, is, this no. guy was the Supreme Commander of NATO. Mm-hmm. So it's not some rogue guy in the State Department who's got his own agenda. But Operation Northwoods was basically staging a terrorist, what we would call today a terrorist act, right. and blaming it on Cuba and using that as the pretext to invade. Yeah. They talked about blowing up an airliner. Mm-hmm. Blowing up an embassy, I think, was part of it, too. And you think to yourself, wait a minute. And by the way, President Kennedy and uh, a guy named Robert McNamara, who was the defense secretary, basically were the ones who put the kibosh on it. Right. And McNamara, I don't know what um, if they went over McNamara's head to President Kennedy or what, but Kennedy was sho- supposedly shocked at this, and no yeah. way are we doing something like that. But you think about it. If your government is capable of blowing up an airliner full of Americans, mm-hmm. then is it so far fetched to think that they could <laughs> go after somebody they don't like? Yeah, not at all. So you kind of think to yourself, on the one hand, that sounds crazy. On the other hand, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound so crazy. Because, I mean,. Look at other things we've certainly done, uh, whether it was putting Mubarak in in Egypt, whether yeah. it was putting Pinochet in in Chile, whether it uh, was we've putting installed, Saddam in in Iraq. We've installed our people mm-hmm. when we see fit, yeah. Yeah, the Shah of Iran. The Shah of Iran, we hung out to dry. Yeah. And what was the result? A vacuum where mullahs took over the country in 1979. Yeah. So, hey, our government is 
uh, Operation Paperclip. Mm-hmm. When we get into the moon landing, um, that's one of Operation Paperclip is where we we took German scientists, some of whom were war criminals, mm-hmm. uh, Werner von Braun, Arthur Rudolph, people who would have been. President Truman set this up. They defied President Truman, who said that nobody as a war criminal will be a part of this, but right. they didn't listen. And I don't know how on top of it the president was. I'm not blaming Truman because it made some sense now that Russia was the enemy, but war criminals should not have been a part of this. No. But we basically took German scientists and we put them in charge of NASA. Mm-hmm. Um, you have things like uh, the Majestic 12. Which is another thing that I don't, I'm not sure if that existed or not. MJ-12 after Roswell was used to discredit UFO researchers. Uh, I think MJ-12 was a misinformation campaign by the government, but right. a distraction. But you know, there's anecdotal evidence that that, that actually existed. That they went after uh, people who um, came up with evidence or saw something, and you know. Uh, intimidated them to be quiet i think there is some evidence that that was true whether that group ever existed or not but i know northwood's paperclip existed without a doubt i mean freedom of information act documents prove it so i mean it's not totally out of the realm of possibility but you also can't jump to ridiculous conclusions i mean i have watched jfk conspiracy things i watched one Mm -hmm. that you know who they said was behind it yeah George Bush Sr. What? I'm not joking. <laughs> George Bush Sr. was behind killing President Kennedy because he uh, knew he'd be president someday. Wow. Um, Richard Nixon has been blamed yeah. for it. Um, and again, if you want to find 10 unrelated pieces of evidence, mm-hmm. you could possibly see in a film how you can unwind all of yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, if... If anything, I mean, Lyndon Johnson would be the most likely culprit if we're going to former presidents. Yeah, you, you know? have to look at who benefits. Right, right. So uh, maybe it was maybe it was Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's responsible. It's possible, I guess. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. yeah, it is. It is strange. I'll tell you, but Oswald remains the enigma to me. And I just can't see a – like I said, I went into this thinking it was a conspiracy. Right. And I've come out thinking it wasn't. And Jack Ruby's part of that too. Okay. But if, you, if you're Oswald, what's the line between Oswald and whoever – if you accept, accept Oswald was the shooter or one of the shooters, what is his connection to it? How do they find this loser? Mm-hmm. No offense, but the guy was just a drifting loser. Yeah. How do you find a guy at a minimum wage job with no phone, no car? How does he become the hitman? Mm-hmm. Now, Jack Ruby's interesting, too. Right. The owner of a topless bar as part of a conspiracy. A hitman who shoots somebody on national television. Mm-hmm. Now you tell me, like the, the theory behind Ruby, Ruby did have some mob connections. That's not false. Right. Um, he spent time in Chicago, and I think he dealt with unsavory characters, and I think that that part's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even somebody like G. Robert Blakey, do you know who he is? Uh, refresh my memory. He is the guy who headed up the 1978 House Select Committee on Assassinations. Hmm. They and they took new technology and analyzed the sound from. Uh, they had new equipment to. Uh, Look at the Zabruder film and a few other things, and they concluded that more than one gun was fired. Now, I think they used, I think it's questionable their findings. Right. But he's a believer that the mob killed Kennedy. Hmm. And this is, this, Blakey's a smart guy. He's not a, right. again, he's not some nut sitting around with a podcast. No offense on us. <laughs> but it's, but it's strange when you hear him talk because his, the key evidence he has, is Jack Ruby. And I, to this day, cannot understand how somebody thinks Jack Ruby is part of a conspiracy. Hmm. Um, this is, again, another guy, owner of a topless bar. Mm-hmm. Okay. The day, and actually he was friends with some people on the Dallas police. That's how he got access to getting in to watch Oswald's transfer. He was being transferred from one place to another. And he actually 
was there because one of he had shut down his establishment for the weekend. President Kennedy was killed on a Friday. Yeah. And it, he, I don't know why, but he shut it down for two days, was upset or whatever. And one of his uh, employees, we'll call them that, <laughs> couldn't work the weekend, obviously, and asked for a cash advance. Hmm. Jack Ruby went to go get it, bringing his dog with. Now, think about it. Mm-hmm. You're going to assassinate an assassin. You're a mob hitman. Mm-hmm. And you stop, and Western Union, somebody, some money, and you bring your dog with. Does that <laughs> sound like a mob hitman? No. And you're going to shoot God. somebody on national television? <laughs> and I saw interviews with Jack Ruby's rabbi. He was Jewish. And his rabbi said over and over that Jack Ruby denied vehemently to the day he died. He didn't live very long after this. Right. He had cancer very quick or something and passed away in like 1966. Um, vehemently denied that he was part of any conspiracy and was happy to take the credit mm. for killing Oswald. Now, again, if you're from 30,000 feet and you look down, yeah. I can see how Ruby looks like a guy who can be part of a wider group. But now... Mm-hmm. So the mob helped elect Kennedy, allegedly, and then the mob takes him down. Interesting theory. Yeah. Now, my the reason that, again, and again, you could believe that, but the reason I don't is because of all of the um, wiretapping that our government has on mob bosses. Yeah. And since 1963, these these jackasses do nothing but rat each other out. The Boston point shaving scandal was mm-hmm. brought out, but the Kennedy assassination was <laughs> You'd think that somebody somebody would have talked. Right. Of all the 100 million hours they've got on these people. Yeah. Do you honestly think nobody would have ever opened their mouth. So you're left with the hardest thing, I think, to accept. And that's that one loser, one drifter, one insignificant little piece of garbage killed a man like President Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And that is a hard thing to accept. Right. Isn't it hard to accept? I find it hard. I find it. I want to believe it was something bigger than that. Right. Well, and, and going as far as saying that um, the CIA was behind it and, like, maybe President Johnson had something to do with getting the CIA involved with the, the three tramps and um, yeah. e, e. Howard Hunt being one of them. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the Rockefeller Commission itself, you know, it initially said, yeah, this the, the CIA was involved. <laughs> you know, uh, what does that do to people's confidence when it comes to a conspiracy, when you have a commission that comes out and says, oh, this is the way it was. And by the way, the FBI and the CIA both had files on Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. I mean, that's something that's very little known that, I mean, he had been court-martialed three times in the Marines, Mm -hmm. um, and he was discharged. He claimed a hardship with his mother, and I don't know, there's no details on that that I could find, Mm. Um, but he had been arrested several times, and he he had visited uh, Soviet embassies in Mexico, I believe, and there was the Cuban embassy in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And like I said, New Orleans was his hometown. So he had been there a few times. He had taken a shot also. This was unknown at the time. He had tried to kill um, another politician before that. I can't think of his name. Um, I could look it up real quick. But he had fired a shot at somebody Mm -hmm. else previously in 1963. And the other thing that's lost on Oswald is motive. Mm-hmm. What's the clear-cut motive? And it's not easy to find one. 
Right. I mean, he could have just been a loser looking for his 15 minutes of fame. We'll never know because he was silenced two days later. Yeah. Um, and this is before Miranda. Mm-hmm. So we don't know what was beaten out of him, if you will, in because he was clearly beaten up by mm-hmm. the police. I mean, if you look at him, he had, he had cuts all over his eyebrows and bruise on his eye. He clearly been beaten up mm-hmm. by the police. It could have been partly when they apprehended him after he killed J.D. Tippett, who was a Dallas police officer, which is what he was initially arrested for because mm. they found him in a movie theater. That's where they found him, where they arrested him. Mm. So, um, uh, again, Oswald remains the enigma. He remains the one that you can't put a finger on. Right. Um, but, yeah, you know, if you want to – but I think, again – when I watch conspiracy stuff, it's well, Oswald was a communist. That means Castro pulled the trigger. Somehow they got from him to him to him to him to him, or Khrushchev killed him. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's, there's, I think if you, like I said, if you tried Oswald for the crime, he'd be convicted in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. If you tried somebody else for it, I don't think you'd get anything for it. Right. Unless you wanted to believe it. And I also will say that, uh, I think what has heightened the conspiracy is the movie JFK. Right. I think that has really, you know, I am not a fan of Oliver Stone. Everything he puts out is true. Yeah. <laughs> but he's no. great at what he does. He is. Yeah. He's sensational at it. Yeah. And if you want to believe the story of Jim Garrison, mm-hmm. which is a real person who yeah. was the... You know, DA in New Orleans, which is who Kevin Costner plays. Yeah. Um, again, if you want to believe that, you can believe it. But here's the problem with a man like Stone. And he calls this his dramatic license. I watched a Nightline interview with him. <laughs> he takes real footage and mixes it with fake acting. Yeah. But he does it so well. I have to give him credit mm-hmm. that by the end of the movie, you don't know the difference. Mm-hmm. You don't remember what's real and what isn't mm-hmm. you know and i mean the, the prosecution of clay shaw who died right after that too i mean you could yeah. take a case garrison killed him right sorry you could tommy lee jones plays him in the movie mm-hmm. um allegedly he was the uh clay bertrand is who he was referred to in the warren commission mm-hmm. um and allegedly that was a conspiracy but it was based on perjured testimony yeah there's evidence garrison knew about it well, um, he's the one that went on the Tonight Show and held up the picture of the three CIA guys, yeah. right? So yeah. it's yeah, yeah, that's what happened. So it's, you know, but, it's but I mean, yeah, if you but, watch the movie, it glorifies yeah. him, and you think he was the greatest thing ever, and right. he was the guy who uncovered uh, Garrison's entire closing statement was actually never made. That was mm. Oliver Stone making that up. Yeah. Now you can go to other things too. I mean, the so-called magic bullet theory, yep. which is flawed. The, the the bullet that went through President Kennedy's neck and hit Governor Connolly, mm-hmm. um, there is uh, – you know, how did they all get hit at once? How mm-hmm. did they react differently? The truth was Connolly's seat mm-hmm. was three inches lower than President Kennedy's was in the back. Yeah. So if you actually line up the trajectory, mm-hmm. you can actually see how it went through him and lodged in his leg. Mm. Um uh, the History Channel did an exposition on this on wow. how. So I always believed the magic bullet. How did that happen? How did it go through all that? Yeah. If you line them up the way they were, and I think Connolly was shorter than JFK too, or something okay. like that. And um, you know, and and again, the other the visual thing of Kennedy appearing to get hit in the front. But what I've learned about. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, he was definitely shot. What are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. I've shot a gun before. But I've actually found out that that getting shot in a reaction uh-huh. is not based on where a bullet came from. Back and to the left doesn't mean you were shot from the front. Right. It's the body's reaction to President Kennedy was already traumatized. And mm-hmm. he would have lived, I think, with the first shot. I think his voice would have been... Um, impaired. He may not have been able to speak, but I think he would have survived that yeah. shot in the 
I think part of his windpipe got hit. Mm. But I think he would have survived it. I don't. But the shot to the head, he was. Yeah. I mean, he would. He never would have lived uh, under any circumstances. So it's an intriguing conspiracy. I'll tell you what. You know, um, it's fun to go dig up stuff. And when you read it, you kind of like. It's like you're reading it for the first time. You know, right. I've heard of the Warren Commission. I've heard what they said. But when you actually go and read interviews and do things like that, it's it, you really, you really get a full picture that you don't get. Watching a documentary, you you right. just the documentary you get whatever the person making it wants you to get. Mm-hmm. So I go on the record that I don't think it was a conspiracy. I have a hard time with the fact that it you know one loser can change history like that. Mm-hmm. You know the way uh, Charles Gateau or Leon Shilgaz or Sirhan Sirhan can do. It's a um, tough thing to accept. Yeah. But I think in that case, that's what it was. Mm. What, that, do you, what do you think? Well, I, I think that... Um, but do, yeah, do you I, think I, LBJ was behind it? Man, I hate LBJ. Yeah, it, would, it, it would be so easy to think that. <laughs> and then there's also... you know, I had that thought, too. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, look what happened, right? Look what he did to Barry Goldwater, who's yeah. one of my heroes. Mm-hmm. He's one yeah. of my favorite guys. In He's American great, history, you know. Yeah. But and LBJ was not a good guy. You no, know? LBJ just, was, was a, the, everything you hate about a politician. Mm-hmm. Absolutely in my opinion. opportunistic. Uh, you know what he did with putting down the Civil Rights Act until he got one passed that benefited the government you know long term uh, <laughs> or in his party yeah his party Let's not forget republicans yeah. are the ones who really passed it yeah southern democrats voted against it right al gore senior the original one robert yeah. bird mm-hmm. let's not forget that yeah but as far as the whole assassination goes i mean i, I yeah i i th- I'm pretty sure that it was legit the way it went down. It was either that or, um, you know, Kennedy's suppression of the um, the space program in conjunction with the aliens that built the ancient pyramids. That no, I'm just kidding. God, I, you had me for a second there. <laughs> I'm just going into crazy territory there. Uh, it's a conspiracy show, so we'll just feed those. <laughs> hey, he leads into the next one, doesn't he? Yeah. Who set the goal of putting a man on the moon at the end of this decade? This decade? No, the 60s. Oh. <laughs> well, it's Sorry. not going to happen this decade, I can tell you that. No. <laughs> I don't think it'll ever happen again. Yeah, no, and that's the thing. Yeah, Kennedy wanted to put a man on the moon, and uh, did he do it? Somehow we did it. Well. Yeah. Did we? I'll tell you yes. what. This one... <laughs> I, I, to this day, keep watching stuff on. Yeah. The moon landing. I, I, you, know, you know, let me let me throw something out here. Yeah. Because the, the evidence we went, didn't went, didn't go, I think a lot of it has to do with the footage and the pictures. Right. I think that's not for me. Mm-hmm. There's two other things that I question about it that I've never gotten an answer to, but we'll get into that because okay. I think I still think it's more likely we went than we didn't. But um, I went into that thinking we went for sure. Mm-hmm. I studied it and thought, "Holy cow, I'm not sure we went." Now I've backtracked. Yeah, and I think we probably went. I don't buy some of the footage and some of the pictures. Right now, remember, you got to put yourself. In a time where this is 1969 to 1972, we did seven missions, six successful. Mm-hmm. Apollo 13 being the exception. Right. That didn't land. We made a movie out of it, and they got famous anyway. Jim yes. Lovell and everybody else got famous anyway. Um, who's Tom Hanks to me, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, um, I the, the, the big thing, it, God, you know, it's, I don't even know where to start. So the pictures for me, if you, again, if you want to see a conspiracy, you can. Yeah, right. Same thing with the footage. Some of it, yeah. I will admit, looks like it's BS. Yeah. Can a flag wave in a vacuum? Can, a, can an astronaut 
like leap behind and kick his legs forward. Now you're in one sixth Earth's gravity. I don't know what that's like. Yeah, you know. But again, the conspiracy theorists: if one photo's faked, yes, then everything's faked. That's right. See, and that was me. I jumped to those conclusions. Now you got to walk back and say, well, you know, not quite sure about that. Um, if you watch photo, if you watch footage, again, put yourself in 1969. You saw something once. On ABC, NBC, and CBS have a total monopoly over television. Mm-hmm. You don't have cable. There's no internet. You have one local channel. Okay, you saw something once and you never saw it again. Right. Nobody thought in fifty years there's going to be YouTube <laughs> where somebody's going to look at this five hundred times. Right. And some photos could have been some PR guy at NASA putting things mm-hmm. out there. How the heck do you know? I mean, yeah. So I kind of dismiss. It's funny because the photos and the video. Our conclusive proof we went and conclusive proof that we didn't. <laughs> That's how they're talked about yeah. in the conspiracy world. And you got to remember, I was deep into this stuff, yeah. looking at this stuff. And I'll say this. I'm no engineer. I'm no nothing like that. I don't know anything about one six Earth's gravity. All I know is what I've looked at, what I've seen, what I've read. I've seen both sides of it. Mm-hmm. Some of it, like the pictures and video, I throw my hands in the air. Uh, could some of that? Could is it possible that they went didn't have good photos? Remember, you could take film through an airport or something at the time, and I, there was something about your. I wasn't fi- alive. Okay, I well, remember. no, but I mean, I've I've read where your <laughs> oh. film could get erased or something like okay. that if you took it. <clears throat> I, I don't know, but it was, it's. <sighs> That stuff I kind of don't base it on. But I do have two questions, Jay. Yeah. Two questions that I've never gotten a straight answer to. I Look, I hope we win. Mm-hmm. I cheer for us to win. Yes. I always do. And I think it's more likely we went than we didn't. This is a conspiracy that will never be proven. Mm-hmm. However, there's two things that I, can, I, just, I can't get out of my head. One, and this is very subjective. Mm-hmm. Is the conduct of the astronauts. Okay. Okay. Now, hear me out. Have you ever seen the Apollo 11 press conference? Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong. Probably. It's it's been a while, but yeah, probably. I've watched it many times. Yeah. And I have, if I had gone to the moon and back, Mm -hmm. Jay, I'm just going to say this. Boy, I would be excited. I'd be telling. I'd Mm -hmm. be... Yeah. Telling it blah, 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 blah. These guys look like three guys being led to their own hanging. <laughs> they look like they look depressed. Buzz Aldrin was a little more savvy in public. Yeah. And see, I talked about Oswald being the enigma in the JFK killing. Yeah. Armstrong is the enigma to me. Mm. His conduct is so strange. He left. He quit NASA right when he got back. Mm-hmm. He passed away a few years ago, right? Uh, 2012 or 13. He really never. You know, some of them pursued political careers, you know, uh, uh, John Glenn and a few others. Armstrong really didn't do anything. Yeah, he really didn't talk. This is the first man to walk on the moon. Hmm. And I go back to 1994. There was a 25 year anniversary. Uh, President Clinton hosted um, uh, uh, something to commemorate the moon landing. Mm -hmm. In Armstrong's speech, and you can find it on YouTube, is the strangest thing I've ever heard. This is a, again, put it in a setting. Mm -hmm. This is a 25-year celebration of the greatest engineering achievement in world history. Right. And Armstrong gave a speech talking about... Things to be left undone, truth's protective layer. And I'm going, just, I'm telling you guys, go on YouTube and watch it. Mm -hmm. And somebody email us and tell me what he said. (laughs) And no questions were permitted. Mm -hmm. And he just remains, it's hard to believe he was the first guy who landed on the moon. I mean, you just think you'd, Mm. I, I don't know. He remains... A mystery. 
Now, I'm not saying he wasn't. Yeah. Like I said, it's more likely that he was. But his conduct just is so strange. Hmm. Um, and a lot of the astronauts quit after going to the moon. Um, some of them wrote books. Some of them you never heard. Some of them you wouldn't know their names if you heard them. Right. And it's just kind of... Um, but their, their conduct I've always found weird. Oh. Do you think that you would quit i mean when when you go to the moon where do you go from there i mean we weren't anywhere well, near going to mars or, no but i think you know. i think you'd um become an advisor to people yeah, who go back i suppose um you would uh but when did we quit going to the moon 1972 we, 72 so yeah yeah apollo ended it was a that. very short window. very much so and uh, a lot of them did quit. I'm sure they could have gone on speaking tours. Oh, yeah. They could have, you know, I think, you know, like I said, some of them ran for Congress mm -hmm. and things like that. You might say, and again, I'm speculating. I don't know why. But you'd think, God, we go to the moon. What else can we do? Yeah. What else can I be the first to do? <laughs> I don't know. You know, yeah. you just, it just, it's just weird. And maybe Armstrong is just a, a reluctant guy. He's not a public guy. I don't know, but I always find this conduct strange. The other thing I found strange is NASA's conduct. Hmm. Today, NASA has basically come out and, okay, I'll just throw this out there. Not saying we can't do it. We probably did. Mm -hmm. The moon is 250,000 miles away. That's a yeah, long way. That is a long way. Do you know the longest, furthest we've traveled other than the Apollo missions? Do you mm -hmm. know what that is? Um, the Challenger, I, I, everything yeah. has been below a certain number. Yeah, uh, I want to say that it's less than 150,000. It's 400 miles. 400 miles. That's less than 150,000. So we have gone yeah. 400 miles, but six times we flew 250,000. Right. And NASA admits today that they can't fly more than 400 miles because of radiation. So hmm. if I, we, there's, again, you can YouTube this. There's NASA people, NASA scientists say, yeah, we've got to figure out how we get through those radiation belts before we can travel beyond what's called low Earth orbit. Huh. And I'm sitting there, well, didn't you figure that out in 1969? Yeah, I mean, it didn't seem like, you know. Now, radiation could be worse today yeah. than it was. That's possible. Um, it's interesting how every astronaut who went, none of them talk about solar flares, meteorites. Mm -hmm. Nobody got sick. No, yeah, none of them seem to have died early. From, we... Yeah. we we sent humans before we sent a penguin or a chicken or a. I mean, we do. We don't. We don't. Yeah. We don't legalize a prescription drug without testing it on a monkey or something. Right. But we send people into space without sending anybody up there first. Mm -hmm. So that's always intriguing too. I mean, if we if we have to figure out how to go through radiation. I mean, these guys were dressed in spacesuits. They were protected by a layer of aluminum. Mm -hmm. Now, you are more protected taking a dental x-ray than yes. they were going through those radiation fields. Now, mm -hmm. radiation is different. There's something called charged particles. This is something I learned, too. Because, again, I took that info and drew 20 conclusions with it. Yeah. But charged particles don't affect you the same way as straight rays do. Mm. Like I said, it could be different now. Right. Um, about the... the, the, the um, Icing on the cake was a guy who claimed, I wish I could play, maybe we'll link to this YouTube, <laughs> who claims that NASA lost all the technology to go <laughs> to the moon. Now, do you believe that for a second? Well, it is a government institution, if oh. possible. Why can't they do that to my tax returns? Then? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> They've never lost that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and there's, there's uh. again... There's other evidence that we went. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's definitely the amount of uh, um, the uh, 
the, the ship was called a Saturn V, mm-hmm. and the amount of uh, fuel or whatever they needed to fuel that thing, they took to go 250,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there is there is things we've brought back. I mean, there are there is some evidence that we went to, mm-hmm. um, and I think if you tried NASA, you wouldn't get a conviction. Right. So, you know, but I think it, it is. I think what's possible is that we went and the footage and the pictures were garbage yeah. and we had to come up with something that some people think would see once yep. and never see it again, <laughs> you know, because it is a great, I mean, and you might say, well, what's the motive? Well, the motive is military superiority yeah. over the Soviet Union. Absolutely. Um, intimidation. It was not out of the realm. It's still not out of the realm that we may fight a war in space mm-hmm. someday. Yeah. Um, you got to put yourself in a place where there's Sputnik, mm-hmm. there's the Soviets were perceived to be ahead of us. Whether that was the truth or not, we'll never know. Right. So, But that carried through all the way to the 80s with the Star Wars program. And, and I will say this. There's evidence that President Reagan lied about how advanced that was. Right. It was a it was a negotiation ploy. Mm-hmm. It was a chess match to intimidate. Th- so don't tell me the government can't lie about this stuff. Right. Government keeps secrets, and you know what? Some secrets they should keep. Yeah. You know, you're a battlefield commander. You don't you don't say what you're going to do. Exactly. <laughs> you- so uh, twelve o'clock p.m. <laughs> on March thirty first, we're going to drop a payload of bombs yeah. at exactly these coordinates. Not like we fight yeah. wars to win them anymore. Yes, anyway, yes, we don't true. do that. I mean, so you know, but um, so there's there's, I mean, there's that there's there's the strangeness of of yeah you might say too one of the things the conspiracy theorists will always point out is well we went back in from 69 to 72 and we've never gone back why have we never gone back because mm-hmm. we can't get past the radiation well belt. but it also no. could be you know there's no reason to go back yeah what would be the point of going landing you don't have to send a person out there anymore right Technology's probably to the point where you don't have to do that. I don't want to hear NASA doesn't have the money. Mm-hmm. Okay, government spending at a federal level has increased 450% since 1986. So don't tell me they're underfunded. Right. Okay. But it just may be that there's no... Um, actually, one of, the, one of the things I found during Apollo 12, which was broadcast again, mm-hmm. that networks actually got complaints... That they cut in and they wanted to watch their, you know, baseball game or something. Yeah. They actually got complaints. The Howdy Doody show. Yeah, got I Love Lucy or whatever was yeah. Gunsmoke. And they actually got complaints about it. Yeah. And I think public maybe did lose interest in it. Apollo 13 huh? probably was different. but um, Right. So... You know, again, if you if you want to believe in a sexy conspiracy boy, mm-hmm. that's a beauty to believe in. But, but I would just like to see them go beyond 400 miles, right? To prove that's not BS. Well, I mean, and here's the other thing. I mean, if the moon is a big old rock, why why go back? I guess you know. I mean, Mars looks a whole lot. I don't know if it's more inhabitable, but I mean, it, it, if you're looking for a place to start a, a colony someday, the moon's definitely not it. No, it certainly isn't. I mean, and there's other intriguing things about what the temperature is on the moon, mm-hmm. um, how things were powered. Yeah. I'm not saying they were, weren't. I mean, again, if you wanted a conspiracy, you could find one. Um, and, and here's the other thing. I'm going to say something, too, that, that makes it sound like I believe in a conspiracy, but I'm going to kind of go back and say that I don't. People say, well, a conspiracy that big, that can't happen. Mm-hmm. Baloney. May I present to you the Manhattan Project? Oh, yeah. Over 100,000 people worked on that directly and indirectly, and the secret never got out. Mm-hmm. Because everything's so compartmentalized. A person in Texas working on widgets doesn't know what's going on in Washington. Right. You know, D-Day never got out. A lot of people, boy, a lot of soldiers were involved in that in the <laughs> in that invasion and it was kept quiet. And yeah. diversionary tactics are used all the time. So it's it's um 
think I think it would be harder to do that today. Mm-hmm. I still think it could be done. You look at you know, Robert Hansen and other people like that. I mean, who defrauded us for twenty years? Yeah. You know, tell me things can't get done or something can't fall through the cracks. But I have concluded that with the moon landing that um, that I think it's more. I think it's. I think we went. Yeah. I but I question some of the footage and some of the um, pictures. And like I said, it could be something that was put out and thought nobody would look at it again. It could be some PR guy who put out pictures and mm-hmm. why are there no stars? Well, I don't know. <laughs> How well, do you know on the moon what what it looks like? I mean, Well, and, and, and that's the other thing. I mean, take out your cell phone, which now they have – excellent cameras you know right you know you have upwards of 12 and and more megapixels and and you crystal clear right try and take a picture of the stars you know <laughs> and you zoom in and it might look really fuzzy but if you you know it, it's it's hard to get the moon and not have it look like super tiny right i mean I, it is I, and you don't and like you know, you watch them run around on the moon. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you know, you're in one six Earth's gravity. You ever been yeah. in that? No. no. So I don't know. Maybe you can bounce around like that. Maybe. Um, although I will say, these guys tear their spacesuits. They're in trouble. Yeah. They probably shouldn't be bouncing around. But you know, <laughs> you know, it's just it's the kind of thing where I think that um, I think that uh, conclusions have been drawn that that are are. You know, if one thing's false, the assumption is five other things are. Mm-hmm. Well, that's where I was. And I had to walk back and go, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Let's say one photo's faked. That doesn't mean anything mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things. I just think I go back to the astronauts I find strange. And I also find the fact that we can't seem to go anywhere today. With all the money, all the new technology we've got, mm-hmm. and you know we can't send a chicken more than 400 miles. Again, there could yeah. be a logical reason. The radiation could be worse, um, or something along those lines. Maybe it's it, it, the risks of sending a human being just aren't worth it anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But I do find oh. it weird that we have to figure out how to get past radiation when we supposedly figured that out in 1969. Right. You would think today's technology would be a million times better. You would think so. I so, mean, they may not be focusing on that, but they may not be and that's very true. Uh there could be like I said, there's a whole host of possibilities. Yeah. But uh I'd like to see somebody go out of low Earth orbit that would blow any conspiracy argument out of the water. Mm-hmm. You couldn't hold one if if that radiation's not lethal. Right. And again, I don't know. Van Allen belts? I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, there's still partly a theory. Mm. You know, there's still, other than Apollo, nobody's gone past them. So we really don't know how lethal they really are. Like I said, charged particles yeah. are different. So um, it could just be that they could have gone through them very fast, yeah. which is possible. So, you know, any of that is a possibility. And again, you, know, you got to look at this stuff with an open mind. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? I got to put you on the spot. Well, I, I guess, you know, I'm pretty sure they went. Um uh... I mean, they got rocks they brought back, right? No. <laughs> um, it, it, I can't find any proof that they didn't. Yeah, maybe they faked the photos. Maybe they faked the video. Maybe they didn't. I mean, it, again, whether they went to the moon, whether they didn't go to the moon, I mean, does it really matter in the scope of things? Probably I, it, not. You know, it's something fun to talk about. But, it, <laughs> you know, it. But it, it's the whole... It's the whole uh, the whole concept behind the thing, Andrew, that we need to be able to trust our government, and we can't because right. they've lied enough. That's something I always say. My government's lied to me so many times. Mm-hmm. I don't blame people. You know, you can go to Gulf of Tonkin. You can go to Watergate. You can go to, you know, more recent times like we mentioned fast and furious yeah where our government has lied to our face mm-hmm. 
And you, it, it does boil it down. That's why I always am intrigued by the people who want more government. I'm like, you want the same government that lies to you to manage your health care and manage your kids' education. And it's kind of like, what are you thinking? Right. You know, and those things are out there, you know. Um, and, and so it's not – maybe to the casual observer, it is a large jump. But to those who already don't trust their government, it's maybe not such a large jump when there are questions and there's a lack of transparency to wonder about things like – the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral yeah, Commission, Bohemian right. Grove, things like that. And, you know, Jekyll, Island, uh, yeah. Jekyll yeah. Island that created the Federal Reserve. Right. I mean, and some of them have come true. I mean, the Bilderbergs, people who believe They're in that. They're real. They meet. Yeah, they used I, what to, do I they do, though? Nobody knows. Yeah, where's the I, media? Where's yeah. the people who keep them honest? Where are they? Right. I mean, I think we're at the point where the mainstream media can't ignore things like that in Agenda 21 mm-hmm. as much. But... I, it still gets no coverage. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, we do a poll on gun control, and that mm-hmm. gets you know coverage after coverage after coverage. A bunch of world leaders, businessmen, uh, philanthropists all meet in a building, mm-hmm. and no one covers it at all. Yeah. I, it's the strangest <laughs> thing. Yeah. Uh, whether they're not allowed to or what, I don't know. Alex Jones gets there. How does anybody else not get there? <laughs> Tell me NBC couldn't get there. Of course they could if they wanted to. Yeah. And I know Alex Jones goes off the deep end on everything, but I like some of his libertarian positions on things. Right. But the guy is another guy who looks for a conspiracy, and if you want to look hard enough, mm-hmm. you're going to find one. Yeah. You have to base things on evidence and and, and I think that's the other huge point here. I mean, we want to talk about, you know, our government has lied just enough to make them unbelievable. <laughs> but that you and I, I think, have come to a pretty sensible place on these, you know, because we've done the research. And we've looked at these things objectively. And we've seen the conspiracy for what it is and we've seen the facts and we've been able to come to a place that I think is, is fairly healthy. Not everybody of course would agree with that because some people are fully in conspiracy land. Some people are fully in not conspiracy land, but you know, the truth is often somewhere in the middle. But when we look at, um, when we look at the things that we talk about, whether it's agenda 21, whether it's, um, a global covenant of mayors, whether it is, uh, you know, the common smart core, growth for America, yeah. common core, all these things that we talk about, we've done the research on and we know them to be true. And this just, hopefully, if nothing else, kind of serves as a way for you to say, hey, yeah, these guys do their homework and they're not just talking about stuff and making stories up. And I mean, I think that that if anything, that this podcast serves as notice that we're not conspiracy theorists. Yeah, and if anything, let me tell you something. The last thing on earth I want to believe in is a conspiracy theory. Right. The last thing I want to believe is that there's Bilderbergs out there manipulating everything we do. Mm -hmm. The last thing on earth I want is world government. The last thing on earth I want is a CIA that can take out a president. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want a NASA that could fake something. Right. I'm cheerleading for these things <laughs> not to be conspiracies. Right. But I can see how people can I, I see how they're easy to get sucked into. Yeah. Well, I mean you have to approach them with a healthy dose of skepticism. Yeah. I mean you just I mean, do because of what our government is capable of. They're capable of anything. Mm-hmm. I mean anything. Yeah. And that's Unfortunate. That's not. That's not how our country was envisioned. Unfortunately, right. And and look, there are conspiracies you can cover all day long. The yeah. Titanic wasn't the Titanic. Right. FDR knew about Pearl Harbor. Gulf um, Tonkin. It's, Abraham uh, Lincoln was killed by Jefferson Davis's orders. I read a book yeah. on that oh. by a man named Edward Steers, who's mm-hmm. a great writer, and normally level-headed, mm. but in that book he's. Off the, I mean, his evidence is Booth meeting with people in Canada, with Booth ending up with Confederate money, 
which again is incidental sidelines to me, but yeah. you know, um, it's it's if you just read the book, you could be persuaded. Right. Yeah, I mean, you really could be. <laughs> He's a great writer. Huh. So it's it's one of those things. I yeah. I can't recall the name of his book, but Edward Steers. If you look him up, you you'd find it. But you know, when I did my Civil War book, I read that, yeah. and I I was kind of. I had to go correct myself after a while because of all the conclusions he jumps to. But, you know, you can find, like I said, if you want to look hard enough, you can find evidence of something. Your job is, you know, as a, I think as a citizen, our job as people who do this is to tell you the facts, mm-hmm. tell you what we know. You draw your own conclusions. Yeah. You know, go you do think, the research. Yeah. I mean, if you think... You know, a photograph on the moon landing was fake. You can't jump to 10 more conclusions on it. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. You think Neil Armstrong's weird like I do? Doesn't mean he didn't land on the moon. Right. Maybe he's just weird. That's true. But I tell you what, your homework, go Google that 1994 speech. You tell me what he said. <laughs> I, I am waiting for an interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just strange. Maybe it was the radiation. I don't it could be. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's But I, I have to admit back. I have to admit I didn't know it was I mean I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. You know, because he like I said, he remains an enigma. Yeah. It always will be. He's dead now, so he's, he's always gonna be a mystery. So, mm. you know. Anyway, that was it's fun to talk about this fun stuff. And yeah. we've talked about Agenda twenty one, stuff like uh uh North American Union. Yeah. We've talked about before as as things that uh, are out there. Maybe it's not that far, but it's kind of drifting that direction. It throwed out the warning signs. I know we did a TV show on that years ago. Yeah. So it's uh, conspiracies are intriguing, and conspiracies sometimes are conspiracies, and sometimes they're really the truth. Yeah. And you're just called a conspiracy theorist because, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've said to people who don't believe in Agenda 21, um, I've got uh, uh, millions of pages of evidence. What's yours? Yeah. And you'll just, you won't get a response to it. Right. So. No, that's the way it goes, you know. And so, like we said, I mean, we urge you to go do the homework, you know, and we provide every week, we provide you with facts and we provide you with articles and we provide you with things that allow you to go do your own work come to your own conclusion because uh, let's face it our cities are under attack yeah and our schools are too our schools are our counties are we need to set up at at the local level we need to set up a resistance and i don't mean i don't mean going out like yahoos and standing on the freeway and stopping traffic (laughs) i mean no that repels people from what you're trying to do right instead uh you know we we need to take the facts that we have and we need to get on city commissions and we need to run for office uh at the local level because it's those things where we're able to dictate policy that actually makes a difference it's by it's by being on the Environmental Quality Commission that you maybe don't want to jump to put in solar panels on every city building because they're they're not that good yet. They may be in, in the near future. They're not yet. You know, if by being, you know, and you can advise the city council to say, hey, we don't think it's a good idea at this time. You know, by being on the city council, you're able to actually cast the vote to say yay or nay. You can say, no, I'm not going to join uh, Minnesota Green Step Cities. Mm-hmm. You can say, we're not going to put mixed-use development here because it's not a, a good for our community. Here's the bottom line. Yeah. Whether Kennedy was killed by a firing squad, whether we landed on the moon or not, you're right, doesn't mean anything right now. But let me tell you what you can control. Yeah. Everything you just mentioned. Absolutely. Everything you just said can be controlled, can be stopped, can be whatever. Can't do anything about what happened in the 60s as much as we love to sit here and speculate. Right. But the real stuff is what's in front of our face. Yeah, and every day I'm posting new stuff on our Twitter account. uh, And it's articles from the people that are saying this, from the people that are wanting to implement this. These are not conspiracy theory articles by some weirdo sitting in a a trailer park in, in Montana somewhere. It's these just got me thinking of Ruby Ridge. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that's another one. Um, 
but I mean, we actually post stuff from Gro- Smart Growth for America. We actually post stuff from the Brooklyn Park City Council. <laughs> we have street Blog USA, Complete Streets. I mean, we're constantly putting this stuff out there so that you can see exactly what they're proposing because that is where you're going to get your information to be able to say, hey, this is a good idea. I believe in this. Or, you know what? These people are crazy. Let's make sure we don't ever do this. Well, let's hope it's the latter. Yes, absolutely. Um, so with that, I mean, go out, find us on social media, go out to our blog, email us. C-O-M-M Solutions M-N is, is, is where you find us. Uh, the email is C-O-M-M Solutions M-N at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, anywhere else on the web looking for us. You can find us. Uh, We're all over social media. Make sure you check out this podcast and share it because we're here to help you. Yeah, and look up these conspiracies. They're fun. Watch these documentaries. I'm just telling you, it's intriguing. Spend a little time, not too much, because you're better served by reading your city's budget. But it's it's good to spend a little bit of your downtime doing this just because it's good to... I think have a healthy dose of, okay, this is a conspiracy. This is not a conspiracy. And, and, and to understand what kind of facts you need to be able to, to put your theories out there and have them believed, to have them, uh, but you gotta have, but yeah, you gotta have a little fun. You do so have a little fun. Yeah. That's, that's my big thing. Have some fun. Yeah. And this is another lifetime ago for me studying this stuff. <laughs> I had a blast doing it. I, mean, yeah. I really did. And, you know, you get to, instead of sitting around watching Keeping Up with the Kredoshians or Fuller House or whatever you're watching, okay, this is fun. This is good stuff to watch. And, again, you know, what your government is capable of doing, to me, makes, uh, you know, I don't know how to say this, but we're all responsible for what government does in a way. You know, we're all subject to what they're doing. Yeah. And somehow we've let them do a lot of stuff to us. We sure have. With that, Jay, you said where everybody is. You Mm -hmm. get to end every show. You got your saying to end every show. (laughs) I'll let you keep doing it. All right. I'm I'm not out of a day job yet. That's good to hear. (laughs) So... Get a hold of us. I mean, you've you've heard this a million times if you've uh, followed us for any length of time. But if not, we we put this out there for you because we want you to make a difference in your community. Because if we don't, who will? I mean, the people who are pro big government, pro regulation, pro taxation, pro changing your community are going to keep doing exactly that. So it takes you standing up and doing something about it. We give you the tools to do that. And that's just because we love doing it. We're passionate about it. Um, but we can only do so much. We put out a podcast. We, we update our blog. We do all this stuff on social media. At the end of the day, it takes you. You know, our voice is only as good as us speaking into a microphone, recording it, and putting it out on the internet. It takes you listening to it and then taking what we say, researching it, and running with it to make it something special. So hopefully, you know, you guys are, are finding value in what we do. We appreciate you. We are so thankful for you. We hear stories all the time about how you've heard such and such from us and you recognize it in your own community. You're running with it. We love that. We love hearing those stories. So get a hold of us. Um, Like I say, we can only do so much. But at that point, Minnesota, all we can say is that we love you. And it's your turn to get to work.